Good afternoon, dear students. I'm Mr. Dane Collins, a teacher of English. Today, I want to take you through an aspect of paper one oral skills, that is paying attention. And uh, we are going to have uh, paying attention as our topic today. Uh, when we talk about paying attention, it is quite different from uh, hearing. Listening is different from hearing. And when you listen, you understand both the verbal and the non-verbal information. There are some reasons why we need to listen. One, uh, to obtain information that is being passed across. Two, to understand the message. Three, for enjoyment. For example, when you're listening to music, we listen for enjoyment. Then four, to learn. Uh, we have some techniques of paying attention. When you're paying attention for, for you to benefit fully from a talk or a presentation made by someone, then we need to take note of some tips. One of the tips that you need to take note of is uh, keeping an open mind. You need to have an open mind without prejudging the speaker uh, so that the speaker can deliver his uh, message uh, properly. You need also to have an open mind so that you don't have some other issues concerning the presentation and therefore you have to listen to what is being uh, spoken about. Number two, you have to be familiarized. You have to be familiar with the information or the topic under discussion. And uh, for you to do this, you can do this by reading uh, the books that uh, are uh, being uh, but that, that we have on different topics. We can also do that uh, by reading from the internet. Uh, we can also do this by asking for ideas from those who know. For example, we may ask uh, uh, someone who is uh, uh, very much uh, conversant with a particular topic to enlighten you beforehand. Uh, then we use the speaker responses to encourage the speaker to continue speaking. And uh, some of these speakers' responses is uh, one of them is nodding your head occasionally in agreement with the speaker. Remember, we are saying you nod occasionally, you don't nod all the time because when you nod all the time, then you may lose uh, direction. Then we also smile occasionally so that we give some uh, the speaker some motivation to go on. Sometimes we use small verbal comments like yes. Ah, uh, mm, I see, etc. We may also reflect back on what the speaker said. For example, by saying, you say, blah, 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 blah. Then next one, we take notes on the important points. When you take notes on the important points, you are going to pay attention to what is being spoken. But remember, when you overdo it, or when you do it at the wrong time, then you may lose focus on what is being talked about. Next, we listen for the main ideas. These are the most important points the speaker wants to get across and are repeated several times. So you need to listen to them so that you don't get lost. Next, we wait for the speaker to pause before asking a clarifying question. For you to uh, pay attention, you listen to the speaker and whenever a speaker pauses and you may be having a question to ask, that is the right time to ask that particular question. We also avoid distractions. You pay attention by avoiding distractions. Distractions can be uh, noise. It can be movements up and down from your colleagues. So when you avoid them, you pay attention. For example, if you are seated next to uh, some students who are making noise, you tend to move away from them so that you don't get distracted. Or when you are seated next to a kitchen, you are in a dining hall, you are seated next to a kitchen and there are a lot of noise coming from that particular kitchen, then it is advisable that you move away from that place, you go and sit at the right place. So when we avoid distractions, we can... Another technique is to sit properly. You sit in upright posture. When you talk of sitting properly, then we are referring to sitting in an upright posture so that you get what is being talked about. Then the next one, you make meaningful eye contact. I hope you are 
uh, seeing what has been bolded there and that is the most important bit of that particular response. Uh, you make meaningful eye contact and this will help you to understand the non-verbal messages that uh, are being communicated. Then the next, we have signs of uh, inactive audience. How would you know that an audience is inactive? There are some characteristics that will help us know that an audience is not active. One, we have uh, uh, fidgeting, where members of an audience are fidgeting. They are moving around idly or nervously. This one will indicate that they are not active. Then two, we have what is called doodling. And doodling is a drawing or scribbling aimlessly. When you see an audience or a member of an audience trying to draw, then uh, without paying attention to what is being said, then we will know that uh, the audience is an inactive. Then the next one we have uh, uh, people or students playing with their hair. When they are playing with their hair, that is an indicator that they are not active. Then the next one, when they are looking at the clock or watch, when they are looking at the clock or watch, that is an indicator. Then we have picking their fingernails, they are picking their fingernails, they will lose concentration on what is being discussed and therefore they will be inactive. We have passing small pieces of paper to one another. When you see a student passing a, a small paper, that is an indicator of lack of concentration or being inatten inattentive. Then we have shifting, shifting from seat to seat. They move from one seat to the next. That's an indicator of uh, in, uh, in, act, uh, in uh, attentiveness. Then we have yawning. When they are yawning seriously, not just uh, 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 yawning, but yawning seriously, an indicator of uh, being inattentive. Then we have dozing off. When you see an audience or a member of a, a, a particular audience dozing off, then you know that is not concentrating on what is being presented. Then we have barriers to effective listening. What are the things that are uh, acting as uh, uh, barriers to this particular listening? One, we have lack of interest in the topic being discussed. When the learners or the listeners are not interested in the topic, then this one will be acting as a barrier. They will not concentrate. Two, unfamiliarity with the topic under discussion. When they are unfamiliar with the topic, they are not researched about the topic, then uh, they may not have any clue on what is being discussed and therefore uh, it will act as a barrier. It will hamper their listening and paying attention in that manner. Then the next one we have fear. One might fear being asked a question and in the process fail to look at the speaker. When one fears, then they he may lose concentration and this one may be a barrier to that particular listening. Then we have noise, which is a distractor. In case of noise, the listeners might not get what the speaker is saying and uh, this one makes it a barrier. Then we have speakers who are absent in communication. We have speakers who are not pronouncing words the way they are, and when that is uh, there, then it may affect that particular process of communication. Then the next one, we have speakers show of biasness or prejudice on a particular agenda or target audience. When a speaker uh, just talks about a particular agenda in a negative way or a particular target group or target audience in a negative way, then there may be lack of interest in listening to whatever is saying and this one may act as a barrier to that listening. Then we have lack of common language. When the language of communication is not common to both the speaker and the audience, then this one may act as a barrier. Then lastly, we have overly use of vocabulary that could not be easily understood by the audience. When the speaker uses a lot of vocabulary, a lot of jargon, a lot of uh, diction that it may not be appropriate to the target audience, then that may also be a barrier to an effective communication.
Then lastly, there is an uh, assignment or an exercise there. We have Henry Olekule, the author of one of the set texts, that is the Blossoms of the Savannah, is coming to your school to give a talk on the themes in his novel. Then the first question there is, how would you prepare for this big day? How would you prepare for this big day? Then number two, state what you would do to ensure you benefit from the talk during the presentation. So you have to state what you do to ensure you benefit from the talk uh, during that presentation. So uh, try to answer those questions uh, so that uh, when we meet next time we may discuss them. Otherwise, that is the end of our lesson today. Welcome next time. Bye-bye.